Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on SPY, the Qs, and IWM. In my scanning today, I only came across one interesting setup, and I will, of course, share that with you towards the end of the video. But to make this more worth your time, what we'll do is also cover our core list of companies in today's session. I want to ask for some feedback down below in the comments section as well. Does the audio quality on today's session sound better than normal? Is it sort of more clear? Is it on par with average? Not much change? or does it sound awful and it's worse than normal? Definitely let me know if the latter is the case here. I installed a new microphone. I would love to hear some feedback. That way I can ensure I continue to provide high quality content to you guys. With that out of the way, let's jump into our S&P analysis and kick things off with the sectors as we always do. Who was leading, who was losing, and where was the weight? The XLP led the pack today. That's consumer staples up at the top of the list, 0.63% to the upside. XLY at the bottom of the barrel, consumer discretionary, down at the bottom here, uh, down 1.8%. As we know, XLY is actually in the top five heaviest weighted sectors, so it is a significant sector. And we're also getting some defensive posturing with that XLP, also the XLU just below it. But this is all adding up with the most recent rotation to the downside in our marketplace. Usually, we only read into this when we're getting a discrepancy between what the sectors are doing and what our broad market is doing as well. As of right now, things are lining up nicely. So let's take a look at where our heavier weighted sectors are the XLK for the heaviest of them all, the tech sector here, down 1.4%, the XLF for the financial second heaviest weighted sector, down 1.68, and then the XLV for the healthcare sector, down 0.41%. It's been a pretty rough start to 2022, largely due to the fact that we are looking for a higher rate environment in the upcoming year, right? We have scheduled some rate hikes out there. So let's check in on these charts and see how they're responding to this information. And I mean, obviously the XLK has been a huge drag on the S&P 500. Tech does not like it as rates rise. So with that being said, something really interesting happened over the past couple of sessions here. We now have a short-term downtrend in effect and confirmed with this lower high from here to here, but also now this lower low from here to here. Now, don't get me wrong. If you were to scrunch up this chart and look at it like this, yes, we're definitely in an uptrend. It's been moving, you know, to the from the lower left to the upper right for the past, you know, year plus. However, from a shorter term perspective, you know, week by week, day by day, yeah, things are turning around a bit here in the XLK. So what are the must watch areas? What are the scenarios to be thinking about in the tech sector? It's all going to revolve around 164 primarily. I'm not saying we have to back test that area, but if there is any sort of dead cat bounce off of this leg from lower, that's going to be like the all eyes on level. You know that we had a bunch of equal lows at this point from in the past. So do we simply have a break retest and failure? Another equal low from here would confirm the downtrend, we would look for that to break, in which case the target's 156 and then roughly the daily 200 SMA. That's bear case scenario number one. The second bearish scenario that's not as bearish as the one we just pointed out would be okay. We've gotten the break, we retest and move a little bit higher, but we still set another lower high underneath 170. So there is a significant amount of work to be done in the tech sector specifically to start to change the trend back to the upside. The one good thing about this possibility right here is that over the course of time, it may pan out to be an inverted head and shoulders. Now that's very, very speculative speaking, but just a scenario I'm thinking about in the back of my mind. So that's the XLK in a nutshell. Let's move along here and talk about the financial sector. This one is sitting right back down on a very important level. We've talked about how important 39 quarter is in the past, really just because not only was it resistance and support in here, but most recently, it's been a huge thorn in the side of the S&P 500. And yeah, we resolved it as the rates started taking off there, but we're right back down at this level. So 39 quarter is the must hold area in the XLF if this is gonna continue to sort of be the driving force higher for your S&P 500. Now, it's been a mixed bag with uh, bank earnings and also the TNX continuing to rocket to the upside. We'll talk about rates in just a second here. Uh, but with the mixed bag of earnings, again, it just really didn't help to build the case for a move higher over the course of the week. So knowing that, here's some scenarios to watch out for. Any dead cat bounces that do not get back above $40 is, in my estimation, a big sign of weakness in the financial sector. We would look for that to really turn into a bear flag here on the daily, breakdowns to take us back into this range. And from there, yeah, maybe we get the rotation to the bottom end, but really just expecting chop and more of a drag on your S&P 500. If we can get over 40 and do something like this, 
then fine. I would say that we technically have this and this higher low in effect. We know that we did just set a brand new all time high. So from that aspect, not as bearish as your XLK, but I would just remind you that because this is not the heaviest weighted sector, it's not gonna be enough by itself to really keep your S&P 500 propped up. Let's take a look now at the TNX for of course those rates which we were just mentioning. There becomes a breaking point in the rates here where it doesn't matter so much that this is moving higher. It's not gonna benefit the XLF at a certain point because it's just gonna de-incentivize borrowing, right? Sure, they're making more money on the loans that they that they create, but people, the consumers, are, are, they're, they get to a point, excuse the stutter there, they get to a point where it's just like, okay, enough's enough. I'm not gonna borrow at this extremely high rate compared to what we've been used to in recent history. So I think we're kind of at that breaking point, even though this has been moving higher, it really hasn't been much help in, uh, in terms of dragging the XLF along with it. So any higher in your TNX is gonna continue to harm your XLK and, in my estimation, put some pressure on the XLF or really just not be a, a positive force for the XLF. So that's all I'm seeing in rates. Obviously, if these were to come back down in a big way, that would be a good thing for your XLK. Maybe we do get that inverted head and shoulder scenario. Uh, but until that happens, again, any, any sort of hold or even higher in the TNX, not good for your S&P marketplace. Let's get back on over to our sectors rounded out here with the XLV for the healthcare sector. Certainly coming into the support trend line, a little bit of an interesting day today. The upper wick would indicate buyers tried to keep it back up above, but obviously sold it into the end of the day. Uh, the question is, do we make an equal low here to 129? In which case, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not what we would ideally want to see, uh, but it would keep the daily trend sort of more neutral. Um, if we do hold on to this as a higher low and we pop back up above into the remainder of the week, then fine. We do still have higher lows on the table, even though we've sort of tested and violated a little bit the support trend line. I will continue to maintain that the fireworks are really going to continue to be between the XLK and the XLF. This is really taking a back seat for now uh, because it's the third heaviest weighted sector. I don't really think it's going to be too, too much of an important drag on the S&P 500. Maybe just one extra piece of the puzzle to keep an eye on in the background. Let's move on over to the VIX now and talk about volatility. There we go. This will certainly just notice that it's up in over 2050. So a volatility event has triggered here. We are seeing some significant selling in the S&P 500. We'll talk about that in a second here. So just be on the lookout, right? Obviously, if your traditional entry is kind of here and your traditional take profit is up here, we'll just put a dash there. And let's say your stop loss is here. You're trying to aim for like a two to one, three to one, whatever. That's fine. In a higher VIX environment, all you're going to do is just loosen up that take profit, look for a little bit more, and also loosen up that stop loss. Again, keep the ratio kind of on on par with what you had originally, just expect a little bit more on either side of your entry point. So that's all volatility is telling us right now. Yes, it is a volatility event. We'll see how high it ultimately does go. Do we get into that 30 handle? In which case we know, hey, things are starting to get a little bit out of control here. Maybe start looking for a market bottom as this reverts back down to the mean, but we'll take that one step at a time for now. Just elevated enough to trigger the volatility event, uh, but not so much where we're going to be explicitly looking for bottoms just yet. Let's go on over to the S&P daily time frame chart now and talk about some of the nuances here. Before I zoom in, so I'm just going to do that so it doesn't get all the way there. Notice the daily uptrend, right? We can anchor it from here. A couple of touches there, 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 grinding it here. Notice that we finally broken that on today's session. This is the first daily bar that's closed outside of that weekly uptrend we've been monitoring for quite some time. It doesn't mean just get overly bearish right out of the gates, but it does start to mean, again, just like in our XLK, that things are starting to change here into the earlier half of 2022. I mean, we're we're just coming in for a big set of equal lows here close to this 450.75 ish area. If this starts to break down, what is the target? It's got to be the daily 200 SMA. The first touch is always the most important touch to any moving average. So we'll see what the reaction is when and if we get there. But that's the downside target if all of this big support area does start to break. Now, is that going to happen into the upcoming uh, you know, remainder of the week is the question. And I would start to be a little bit skeptical just noting the nature of the move that's already started to unfold here. I mean, the market can always do whatever the market wants to do. However, it is starting to feel a little bit dragged out to the downside, a little overextended, if you will. Volume's kind of on par with what we would expect on a higher volume sell-off that is traditional. The next major support from a structural aspect, where's that at? I would start looking at this, okay? And that's gonna be, again, just north of your 200 SMA on the daily, close to 443.40. Why is that the level? Well, we certainly had support in here, resistance, and then we gapped up and over it, and that led to this 
most recent sort of aggressive trend higher in the marketplace. So to me, that's a perfect spot for the market to come back down, tie in perfectly for a super support. We'll see if it does provide a bounce and we do get higher out of there. Uh, in terms of the market structure and what unfolded today, certainly a big red bodied candle closed week on the lows. Again, high volume. It would indicate that there could be some more downside left in the tank. But again, would it be wise to be chasing it here? In my estimation, no. As I've sort of talked about in the past, we have this theory about 100% retracements. Very rare that you just break this on the first attempt and travel significantly lower. So I would watch for some sort of dead cat bounce, another lower high, give us the H pattern like we discussed in the XLK. Then we can watch for the breakdown of this level into the future. That's the risk friendly way that this could potentially unfold. If it does start to break down immediately without that sort of dead cat bounce and you want to get involved, I would say fine, that's okay, but be prepared to have a stop loss ready and stick to it. Because if the bounce does come, it can be more aggressive than you think as shorts late to the party start to cover their position. So the market's in a very, very precarious spot as we move into the remainder of the week, noting all of those things we've talked about, break of the support trend line, coming into horizontal uh, you know, support, also 100% retracement, dead cat bounce. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts at this juncture in the marketplace right now. We'll see how it ultimately unfolds, but these are the levels and the things I'll be thinking about into the end of the week. Let's uh, take a quick look at the market internals now see if this is supporting what we've been saying. So up in the top right hand corner, I've got a link for you. It's a video explaining what this all is, how you can set it up and how it'll help you make better intraday trading decisions. Uh, and what we'll notice is that internals are pretty much confirming that, you know, the selling has been fairly strong. Uh, you can see on the Tuesday session, that's because Monday was closed, of course, well, well underneath that negative 300 million mark, which is usually the benchmark we use as, you know, just a yes or no. Is it significant selling or is it just kind of an average day? I would say it was significant. Even on today's session falling off into the end of the day after some consolidation and really just a failure to get positive on the day. Same thing holds true with the advanced decline lines getting extremely nasty to reads we don't typically see on Tuesday. Once again, confirming that a lot of things across the marketplace were in fact selling off from an internals perspective. And again, falling out of positive, resisting at the zero line. That's a big tell right there. The fact that we, you know, break, retest, fail at zero just means that nothing across the marketplace could get back into gear on that dead cat bounce we experienced right around noontime on today's session. So certainly bearish internals from that perspective. The tick, obviously we're looking at cumulative builds Tuesday, certainly bearish on today, not as bearish as you may have expected uh, given the nature of how we've closed. But look at this, right? Into the afternoon, a lot of sustained ticks down here at the negative 1000 mark, which would indicate a lot of emotional selling, which brings me to my next point, which is gonna help us navigate tomorrow's open. We have a spike in play here, which simply means, I think the market pro profiles, probably the best way to look at this. So uh, yet again, another video for you just to explain what this is, how you can uh, start using this terminology, and just to become familiar with what I'm talking about here. Uh, but what I was mentioning was the spike, right? And market profile does a great job of showing us this because it literally looks like a spike. And what we look for is an M and N period, the last you know 30 to hour of the day, do we produce a move that goes significantly lower? And you know we essentially don't have enough time that has elapsed to prove whether or not these prices are fair. So the sellers, did they get a little bit ahead of themselves? The profile is gonna do a great job of illustrating a couple of things here. Traditionally, we would look for the top of the spike to act as resistance, the bottom of the spike to act as support. If we're opening inside, you expect two-sided balance back and forth because you know these prices are being deemed fair. As you bang your head into the top of the spike, you expect resistance as all of this overhead supply starts to sell for a break even. So that's how that would typically work. The top end of the spike is at 45, 40, nine, we'll call it, call it 45.50. And the bottom end of the spike is today's low closer to 45.16.50. So in knowing this, there's a couple of things to watch out for. Again, we mentioned the first scenario, which is opening in the spike is just acceptance lower. It does look like a likely scenario based on the point of control. We'll get to that in a second. If we can move out of the spike to the upside, that negates all of the sellers here who are late to the party selling into the afternoon. Those people likely have to close as we start moving over 45.50. And I would expect a retracement into the meat of today's profile. Ironically enough, the point of control is lower, so it's not going to be a target, but we will look for the high volume node, which is up here. Okay. And that's going to be close to 4585. After that, there is a poor high on the profile. So could that use some repair? Absolutely. Does it have to be repaired? No, not necessarily. Just something to think about, right? It's also a mechanical high, noting that it's very close to a two day high range there and an overnight point of control. So to the upside, and again, this doesn't look like the likely scenario as of right now, I'm just talking about everything. So 
you're prepared. Uh, I would watch out for this. If we can do something like this, higher low break above the spike high, move to the high of day, higher low again, any reattempts. This is a weak area because of the nuance here, right? All of these things we just discussed, that should be broken and repaired if it's tested on a subsequent test. Could be the second test, probably not the first one. That's the upside. We talked about the neutral scenario here. The downside would be, okay, we open up below the spike on a gap down. That's incredibly bearish, right? We're still technically searching for buyers. They just haven't appeared yet. So you don't wanna see that happen. The main reason we don't think upside is likely is because the point of control, as we alluded to earlier, did in fact flip lower on the day during that spike, which is incredibly telling the fact that, you know, the entire day we hung out up here, but all of a sudden market on close, the most volume goes through dead on the lows of the day. Seems pretty, uh, I don't want to say suspect, but definitely a little bit interesting and building the case for a little bit more bearish than bullish, certainly here in our S&P 500. So enough profile. Let's go back on over to the platform here, round out the broad market, get into the companies and the one additional trade idea. QQQ, very similar to our XLK, the tech sector, of course, lower highs have been in effect for more than... Um, what we have on the XLK, noting that the all-time high was here. We didn't make the new high, uh, all-time high like the S&P, so lower high off the bat clear lower high now and definitely a new lower low at the daily 200 SMA. So is there a bit of an uptick here in the QQQ? Could be, could be. I would watch for a back test of this ultimate area if it's gonna be a significant bounce at the, uh, what's that, 378.50. That's gonna be the equivalent of the 164 level in the XLK. And again, when we get there, look for the same exact things. Do we get a retest? So it would be break, retest, turnaround, equal low, expect lower. We know that that big area down here, close to 355, and this prior area of support will be the next area to pay attention to. Or do we accept back above? Just like the XLK, same exact scenarios apply. We would look for the equal high if this is going to turn around over time. The chart would suggest lower based on the structure of the candles that printed on today's session. Let's continue on and talk about the IWM. This is the biggest red flag that I've seen across the broader marketplace as of right now, firmly falling underneath 208. Why is that such a big red flag? Well, if you've been following the small caps for essentially all of last year, you know we were range bound and that's the low end of the range at 208. Falling out of that, all of this pent up energy, anyone who is building a position in this area is now wrong. If they want to close their position and just bail on small caps for 2022, now's the time they're going to do it. And we definitely have that warning here in the IWM. So things are not looking great in the small caps, which may be a risk off indication for our broader marketplace. Again, you can see how 2022 is shaping up right off the bat to be a more difficult year to navigate. And that's why the, uh, you know, I'm pointing out everything in today's video because a lot of things are happening as we potentially reach a turning point in the marketplace. Now, it's not a guarantee. I'm not saying the market's gonna crash. I'm just saying the underpinnings and what's been going on recently is definitely different than what we've seen in 2021. So what is the major support underneath us? Well, we're gonna have to go out to like a, a weekly here, multiple years to see what we have underneath. I would start watching out for 191.70 as a larger support. You can certainly see how we consolidated there for a little bit, but you know, that's not really too, too helpful. We're going to go, uh, we're going to keep it on the two years, but we're going to go down to a daily to see what we've got there and how, uh, you know, if there's anything else, yeah, I would start looking at this also around 198, 200 psychological. So there's a little bit uh, more, more room to fall to the downside here in your IWM and small caps as this breakdown starts to unfold. If we get into these levels, we know, hey, the breakdown's kind of on. If we do something like this and sharply recover back above 208, maybe it's a look below and fail, kind of the opposite of what we've had in here. And again, that would just be another complicating factor in the broader marketplace right now. Overall, the chart would suggest lower, higher volume selling, weak closes, everything we've talked about in the internals, the market profile, the market is kind of setting up or it looks like it's setting up for a move lower. We want to be prepared for all of that. IWM, once again, throwing a red flag in the mix. Let's go through our companies now fairly quickly. I know we spent a long time today on the broad market, but it's, again, at such a pivotal moment, I think it's worth covering all this stuff. So Apple certainly breaking down under the 50 SMA underneath our uh, horizontal area here, the equal lows, just like the XLK, we have a high, lower high, all these equal lows. Now we get a lower low, solidifying a downtrend. Earnings are around the corner on this one, not this week, but next. So keep that on your radar as a sort of spike in IV, especially for you options traders. The next area of support, super support, is around 164 quarter coming in from the dominant support trend line. Do we turn around 
there? Maybe. Again, we are starting to feel a little bit overextended. Maybe there's some sort of dead cat bounce that's produced there. The back test area, again, just like the XLK, just like the QQQ, is 168. You can see the equal lows. Is it just going to be a break retest H pattern, another leg lower? Maybe. If we get back above, that does start to say, okay, it's not maybe as bad as we thought inside of Apple. So that's what I'm seeing there. Next up, we have Netflix. This one's been the relative weakness sort of bear of all of them. Uh, earnings are actually on tomorrow's session and it's after the close. So you know, that's going to make uh, options trading a little bit more difficult, obviously, with increased implied volatility, premiums will, will be pumped up. You're going to have two things working against you, IV crush as soon as the number comes out, as well as theta if you're trading weekly options. So be prepared for that. Probably wouldn't gamble on earnings here. Again, the chart would suggest lower based on this bearish acceptance off of this sort of move like this, starting to look like a bear flag. Ultimately, the next target underneath is here at 483 coming from, let me scrunch up the chart and illustrate that, big area of support from in here was really, really stubborn. I think, uh, you know, if you go back and watch the videos, I thought this was going to break for the longest time and ultimately it did resolve higher. Maybe it's going to come back into play in 2022 and give me that, uh, you know, long lost dream. I don't know. We'll ultimately have to find out. But again, not really showing any bullish strength here with just a bit of a consolidation doji on today's session. Let's move along to Tesla falling back down underneath 1000 on today's session. Kind of a big deal uh, in my estimation here. A thousand was kind of that big magical number that everyone was watching. Could we produce high higher lows at it. Again, there's still the opportunity for that to happen. However, this H pattern is not looking great for this to hold here. If it starts breaking down, ultimately gap fill is the target into the remainder of the week. And then after that, it's all about the super support prior all time highs 900, as well as the dominant support trend line. Let me zoom out and show you where that's coming from. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, sort of six ish, not really there, uh, but you get the gist, right? That would ultimately be the next target there. Um, again, not looking fantastic. The chart would suggest bearish indecision, or excuse me, not indecision, inverted hammer on the Tuesday session, wicking off the 50 SMA back down underneath that magical 1065 zone. Doesn't look great inside of Tesla. Uh, I, I you know, wouldn't be pushing my luck to the upside where it currently sits. Next up, we have Alibaba. Quick one here. Again, not much uh, interesting going on. Upper wicks on the daily inside bar today. It's basically going to come down to do we break up and out of the two day highs or down and out underneath the sort of inside bar or excuse me, outside bar with the inside bar inside of it. Uh, the low from that, which is the pullback or excuse me, not pullback area all over the place. It's late today. Um, but this breakout zone, right? So underneath 124.13, boom, you're looking at that 115, 116-ish area to the upside up and over 139, 140 is kind of your critical area. Remember that 130 is a big pivot in Alibaba. So if we're below it, skew more bearish. If we start to get above it, maybe we, uh, you know, there's a better chance for the two day high breakout. Next up, we have Facebook, the sort of, you know, decent uh, maybe I shouldn't even say decent relative strength because, you know, still closed as a massive inverted hammer almost right on the open there. But there was a significant push higher at first, and we actually took out the prior high of day, which is fairly interesting. Um, but nonetheless, closing extremely weak. Nothing really great to say about this from the bullish perspective. This one's, as we know, the chop monster here. This probably wouldn't be my favored setup into the remainder of the week if it does rotate lower under the two-day lows. Three tens your target. We know that's kind of the bottom end of the range if I scrunch this up just defining the range as kind of this area right here. We're in the lower third, so that is of course more bearish than bullish. If we get back into the middle, expect more chop, really no direction in there, back and forth, day trades only, only getting along on Facebook up and over 336.50, not looking like a likely possibility. Into the end of the week, Nvidia is up next, breaking down, big breakdown, but coming right into this area that we've talked about in the past. It's not the strongest support, so I would watch out for continuation here to fill the gap underneath. Again, is this starting to get a little bit over overdone? Maybe. Is it wise to chase it short right here? I probably wouldn't opt to do that, but if you do see it moving lower and you're interested, the chart is certainly bearish, so you would be going with the trend at this point in time. On any sort of moves back higher, it's all about 260. Do we resist here? We know that that's an important area because if we zoom in, that's exactly where this hammer produced a little bit of a dead cat bounce. So do we resist there, roll back over, equal lows? We can go lower from there. That would, in my estimation, be the more risk-friendly entry, especially noting that it would be a lower high from a bar by bar perspective from right around in here. Let's say we print an inverted hammer, the next day we flush it, boom, there you go, lower high. Next up, we have Microsoft. 
Again, more of a sort of breakdown here. Inverted hammers, it's been the common theme. I, I mean, you probably get the sense that a lot of these charts are similar. They're all looking fairly bearish. Things aren't fantastic out there across tech. The question is, is now the time to short it? Uh, in Microsoft, I would say that this consolidation is actually fairly healthy, right? So this is healthy bear flag consolidation. Breakdowns of these lows definitely put into play some of these lower targets. 300 will be a nice uh, big psychological target to be looking at. We also have earnings, I believe that's next week, right? the 25th. Yeah. So uh, after the market close on the 25th, we have earnings. That's next week. So definitely into the end of this week, we could be looking for bearish opportunities under the two-day lows to get us into those targets. As we just mentioned, the big target, the ultimate target is the daily 200 SMA and that 293.49 uh, just coinciding perfectly for a super support into the remainder of the week. Lastly, we have Amazon and in this, a little bit of an equal low, right? So here, Bearish close, obviously weak, but dead on the low of that hammer candle, which produced the bounce. So again, 100% retracement. Is it very likely that we smash through it on the first go around? Eh, I would start to say not really. Obviously, it looks like it's gapping down in the post market right now. A little bit spready in Amazon, though. Uh, so maybe we open kind of right up at these lows. Ultimately, I would watch for a, uh, a day of consolidation and then a potential break into the future, like on the Friday session or early on next week. Earnings are later on in the month, if not yeah, the first day of February. So not, not too much of a big deal right now, but Amazon definitely no different than anything else we've looked at. A little bit more bearish. We're also underneath now this area of balance, big lows from here. And again, we're firmly underneath that area. So definitely skewing now towards the bear side here, uh, coinciding with everything that we've looked at. Hopefully this video is not too long winded on how things have been changing. Then the last trade idea, which I did want to bring up is on QCOM, COM, there we go. And this is Qualcomm. And what I wanted to point out here is that this has been relatively strong throughout the whole tech sell off. Notice how it's really only been going sideways here. If the market sees any sort of bounce, so if there's a dead cat bounce, QCOM, I do believe, would have the opportunity here to potentially bounce off the low end of its range and get back to this midpoint, this flush point, closer to 182.19. Again, it's not a guarantee. It's something I thought was interesting. It's really the only setup out there that I saw that I was like, hmm, that strikes me as you know something that I want to watch out for. So here you go. Here it is. QCOM, bottom end of the range, coming in hot and heavy. If the market sees a bounce, maybe we retrace to the midpoint there, that flush area. If it breaks, then what else do we have? Well, clear area for a target target coming in from that pullback right there close to 160. Yeah, my eyeballs are pretty good today. 160 would be the downside target. And also from a range perspective, here you go, right? There's your range double. So perfect downside target. Uh, I mean, even if you just wanted to play the range, there are so many things you can do with horizontal ranges, right? If it does something like this, look below and fail. What's the target? Top end of the range. If it breaks down, back tests and fails here, what's the target? There you go. It's right there. If it pops back in without sort of breaking down, midpoint of the range, there's the target. So overall, QCOM, definitely something I did want to bring to your attention with all of its possibilities. Super long-winded video. Hopefully you got the sense that the market is starting to change. It's becoming a a little bit more difficult to navigate. These are all of the things and the points that I'll be thinking about with the levels. If you enjoyed the video today or learned anything new, let me know in the comment section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main or sorry, secondary channel is linked down below in the description where we do 10 to 12 video ideas every single day. Please leave some feedback on the audio quality of today's video. And all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.